Again, I want to welcome you here. It is great to see the auditorium full and to see the smiling faces. I think I, I, this is one of my favorite Sundays of the year. Uh, as we wrap up Family Matters Month and we have what we call our parents and baby blessing, parent dedication, baby blessing. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 16, the scripture says very clearly, but Jesus called them to him, saying, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Jesus couldn't have been more clear with his words, could he? And today, again, is a special day here at Beltline. It's a day we celebrate all the new babies that have been born in the past year. It's a day we ask God's blessing on them. And it's the day that we ask these parents to dedicate themselves to raising these precious children in the Lord. And in light of what we've been saying over the last three weeks, I think this makes perfect sense as we have to allow our relationship with Jesus to affect every other relationship that we have as this diagram shows us. It makes sense that we do what we do today. Our relationship with Jesus Christ changes everything about us. It changes how we interact with people. It changes how we use our influence. It changes our priority. When we become followers of Christ, it changes literally everything. And because we're forever changed, we as parents, we are forever changed as well by that same relationship with Christ. And, and, and so let me say it this way. When we become parents, we are forever changed. <laughs> but what is not changed is our relationship with Jesus. It still has to be the priority of our lives. And so what I want to do quickly is just kind of run through some of the reasons why we do this. Uh, on the last Sunday in September, uh, at least for the last three years, and hopefully moving forward. There may be some of you here today saying, why do we do this? I mean, come on, I'm going to do something else. Or I hope that's not your attitude toward it, but if it is, let me tell you why we do what we do. Number one, we're told in 1 Samuel chapter 1 that Hannah presents her son Samuel to the Lord. And as we look to the New Testament in Luke chapter 2 and verse 22, we read that Mary and Joseph actually brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem in order to present him before the Lord. Can you imagine what that must have been like for God? He's, here's Jesus brought to the temple, his son brought to the temple, and there he is in heaven knowing this is, this is, this, this is the one who is co-eternal with me from the foundation of the world, who is fulfilling my purpose, and now, wow, what an amazing moment. That must have been uh, for God. And in the same way today, these parents are bringing their sons and daughters. And what they're doing, and this is important, is they are presenting first themselves to the Lord. Because it's going to be hard to present your child to the Lord if you're not first presenting yourself to the Lord. And so what these parents are doing today is presenting first themselves to the Lord and then their children. And so we have scriptural evidence and examples for what we're doing. But more than that... This is where we begin to show our relationship with Jesus and how that relationship influences everything that we do and our relationship with our children is certainly at the top of that list. And while these children will probably never remember this day, there will be pictures that they can look at later, but as our children will never remember this day, I guarantee you their parents will. I guarantee you as we walk into the future, if the Lord wills, these parents are going to remember this day when they presented their child to the Lord and asked for his blessing in their lives. It's a day they will remember, a day they committed themselves to raising uh, their children in the Lord. And don't we need reminders like this? Reminders of how important it is to be followers of Jesus? I mean, we just went through the ultimate reminder just a moment ago. And every single Sunday we do that because we are a forgetful people and we need to be reminded of the importance of these kind of things. And so we, we never forget, we must never forget uh, the, the promises and the commitments that we make. And we must never forget or walk away or drift away from the rock of our salvation and that is Jesus Christ. But that's not the only reason why we do this. Another reason we do it is because the scripture tells us that children are a gift from God. Our children are a gift from God. Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Sons are a heritage from the Lord, children a reward from Him. And so as believers, we are called to recognize that our children, first and foremost, belong to God. And this is an incredible way to emphasize that point, not just to those of us who have children, but to all of us. 
And even those of you who may have grown children, this is a great reminder that those children that we've raised still belong first and foremost to God. And an event like this reminds us that we never stop being parents. We never stop that influence that God has given us in our kids' life. And God in His goodness gives children to us as gifts. And some of you are thinking, man, can I give the gift back? But that's not what we're talking about today. But He's also given us the wonderful privilege of enjoying these gifts. And because children belong to God and are given by grace as gifts to parents, it's only proper and it's only appropriate that these children be dedicated back to the Lord. A third reason we do this is because it's about giving thanks. And I don't think we do that near enough. I don't know about you, but I don't think we thank God near enough. We pray and we petition and we pour out our requests to Him, and oftentimes when those requests get answered, we never pause and say thank you. And so this is a day where we pause and thank God for the blessings that He's given us in our lives. All life is a gift from God. And so today, we take the time to recognize who God is, and we take the time to recognize the blessing that he's given to the parents and to the family that is the Beltline Church of Christ. And so we say thank you for so many things in life, and this is a special way to pause and recognize the wow factor of what God has done in creating new life and sustaining that life. In Psalm 100, the scripture says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give to him, give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good and his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. It's important for us to pause in the craziness that is life and remember and thank the one that gives life and the one that sustains life. And I want to say this here as we think about thankfulness. As a church, we should be amazingly thankful that we have so many little ones running around. Because if we didn't, I would worry about the future of our church. But because we do and we hear the cries and we hear these little ones and we see them scampering at our feet, man, we should be thankful beyond measure that this is a church that is alive, a church that is growing in every possible way, and we need to pause and thank God for that as well. Another reason we do this is because it's an opportunity to make some promises. It's an opportunity to make some promises. You see, in the world today, it's easy to make a promise one moment and then forget it to next, to change our minds. But the promises made during this dedication service are promises that have been made many times by many people. But how many times do we really struggle and grapple with what we're about to do? I want to encourage you parents. I want to encourage this church because we're all making promises today. I want to encourage you to personally seek to carry these out, to do what you can to be a blessing in somebody else's life. And so today, what we're doing is we're calling these new parents to a higher standard. We're calling them to a higher standard. It reminds me that it reminds those of us who are, whose children are older that we too have made promises and to not give up on those promises. So we're saying, listen, we, we want you to commit your children to the Lord, and we're going to support you and help you in that. But it also reminds us that I have children that, man, we've made some promises too. And we need to be reminded to be working toward those promises. And finally, number five, the fifth reason we do that is because it's when we specifically invite God's blessings upon these children. This doesn't mean, let me say this very, very clearly, this doesn't mean that the child has become a Christian. It doesn't mean that they are saved in the way that we think about it. But what we're doing is seeking God's blessing upon the child to help them grow, develop, and flourish so that one day they will make the decision on their own to be followers of Jesus and give their life to him. I remember the first year we did this. You know, people, when you do something different, people go crazy. We actually had some people, obviously, who weren't at the service to say, they're in there baptizing babies. No, we're not. We're asking God's blessings on these kids. And if there's something wrong with that, shoot me now because I... I I don't want to live in a world where God's blessing on a child isn't appreciated and, and, and sought. That's crazy. We ask God to bless all kind of things in our lives. Why would we not ask him to bless our children in every possible way? This is an acknowledgement today, church, of God's sovereignty. Not only his sovereignty over the child, but also his sovereignty over moms and dads and over all of us. 
And so our parents present their child before God and his people, which is us. And we ask for God's grace and God's wisdom in carrying out those responsibilities. Parents also come praying, again, as we already said, that their child might one day obey the gospel, come to Jesus Christ and be saved, because that should be the ultimate goal of every person in this room. Every person. Not just the parents of these children, but every person. Our priority should be helping these children learn who Jesus is and come to know him as Lord and Savior. Take your Bibles and go with me to Mark chapter 10. I want to look at one passage and then we'll we'll move on with our festivities for the day. Uh, But I want to look at this passage and I think it's important. And I've missed some things over the years as I've been looking at this passage a little bit more closely here recently. And let me just read it to you. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. Here's what it says. And they were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, listen to his response. He was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms, and he blessed them, and he laid his hands on them. Now, this passage in Mark reminds us of the importance Jesus placed on children, and that he was truly making and willing to give his time to them, and so must we. We need to take the time to truly engage with dedicating parents and children before God. We need to be seeking His blessings upon them and following up and seeking so that these people will live out the promises that they make today. But I want you to notice two things about this passage. The first thing I want you to notice is Jesus' emotion. I guess I had missed this in all the times that I've read this passage before. Look at Jesus' emotion. I find it interesting that Jesus, according to the ESV, gets indignant when they're trying to stop these little children from coming to Jesus. I find that amazingly interesting. Why indignant? Why did Jesus do that? He gets really, really, really upset. And there are not many times in Scripture when God does that. When Jesus, you know, shows this type of emotion, that doesn't mean that he didn't, but there are not many recorded instances where Jesus gets so emotional as he does right here. And so it tells me something very important. It tells me, number one, that Jesus places amazing value on children. He places an amazing value on children. And the second thing that it shows me is that these disciples seem to feel that they and or Jesus are too good for some people and that their role is to decide who should be allowed to meet with Jesus and who shouldn't. And Jesus completely disagrees with that kind of thinking. And so he gets angry when someone tries to stop whoever it is, but especially little children from coming to him. Are you following me? He gets angry at that. He says, don't you dare stop these little ones from coming to me because for to such belongs the kingdom of God. And so when we devalue something that God amazingly values, the result in God is indignation. When we try to stop someone from getting to Jesus, he's got a real problem with that. He's got a real problem with that. You see, these apostles were doing the same things that the Pharisees were doing. They were trying to decide who was allowed to come in and who needed to stay out. And Jesus says, I'll have none of that. You let the little children come. You let them come to me. The second thing I want you to notice, though, is Jesus' reaction that we read about in verse 16. Jesus' reaction is threefold. First, Jesus takes these little ones in his arms. Can you imagine what that must have looked like? He takes them in his arms, just like Ori's doing on the way out. Takes them. He he blesses them, and he lays his hands on them. What a moment. What a moment. We see the heart of Jesus on display in this simple act. And here's what I wonder. I wonder if any of these little ones became disciples of Christ when they were older. I wonder. I wonder. Did they 
did they remember back to this moment when that, when that preacher from Jerusalem, from Nazareth, when, when that preacher took them in her arms and hugged them and blessed them and laid her hands on them? I don't know. I don't know, but it's an amazing moment in Scripture, and I love it. I mean, isn't that what we all want? To be taken in the embrace of Jesus, to have him lay his hands on us and bless us. Isn't that the desire of all of us who claim to be followers of Jesus? And here these little ones are blessed to that. And so today, we see parents who love the Lord make a commit, making a commitment to allow that relationship they have with Jesus to affect their relationship with their children. Today, they are giving them back to the Lord And today, these parents, like the ones from centuries ago, are asking Jesus to take them in his arms, to bless them. And today, we as a church celebrate with them. And today, we commit to helping those parents raise them as well. Let me tell you how this is going to work going forward, a little bit of an order of events here. In just a second, Dustin Curtis is going to get up, and he's going to share some thoughts with us as one of our new parents. And uh, uh, it's going to be an amazing time. I know you're going to be blessed by that. After Dustin's done, we've got a little video presentation of all our little ones that we want to that we want to put on the screen for you. And then we're going to one by one call the families on stage and or around here. They don't have to be on stage. They're up here on this wooden area. And uh, we're going to ask then for them to make some promises. We're going to ask for you as a church to make some promises. And our elders are not only going to be presenting some gifts, uh, but they're also going to be praying over these kids today. And so right now, I just want to ask Dustin Curtis to come forward and to share with us some thoughts on behalf of him and and all of our new parents today. Well, if you would have told me about five years ago I'd be up here doing this, I probably would have looked at you funny. I have a... (laughs) This is probably the look you would have gotten from me. I like that picture. Um, well, most of you know our story, um, and I want to tell a little bit about it. When David Higginbotham did this last year, I remember we were leaving, and Steve ran me down in the parking lot, and he said, I want you to, I want you to do this next year. Of course, I said yes, um, and that year went by unbelievably fast. I can't believe how fast the year went by, but um, anyway. If anybody knows how to tell Steve no, I would like to talk with you because I can't seem to do that. (laughs) He asked me to do something, and inside I'm saying, no, 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 I don't want to do that. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. But actually, um, uh, I need to to do this. I need to tell our story because um, it's an amazing amazing story. Maybe it'll encourage someone. Um, Most of you know our kids, um, but you don't know the background probably of of how we got to have these kids, uh, you know, praying about it and, and whatnot. But so I wanted to tell you a little bit about that, and I try to I'll try to move through it as fast as I can. Um, you know, our two older kids, Wesley and Rachel, who are wonderful kids. Well, we're so thankful for them. Um, they are truly a blessing from God. Um, we uh, I want to tell you the story about the the, uh, the blessing, but I want to also mention that there was a lot of heartache in there. There was a lot of frustration, um, a lot of fear, a lot of anger that went before that. And that's what a lot of people don't know about. Um, so we basically, uh, in 2001, well, let me, let me read a verse that always keeps coming to mind to me when we think about uh, how we've been blessed, and it's Ephesians 3.20. Um, it says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Um, that verse plays out in our life um so i want to take you back to 2000 around 2001 when we um decided you know well a little bit before that we decided we want to have kids we prayed about it uh we didn't it didn't occur to us that it would be any problem having kids um so in 2001 deborah was pregnant so we were elated we were just happy about that and uh started going to the doctor and about 10 weeks along into that um, we went and had an ultrasound and there was no heartbeat so um, so anyway I'm a marine up here I'm not supposed to break down like this but anyway 
And that's tough, and I know a lot of you in here have had that same situation. It's tough, uh, probably tougher on the, the mother. Um, so that she had a miscarriage, um, which we were confused. We didn't know what was going on. We, we were talking to doctors, and they were like, well, you know, that, that happens sometimes. So we, we started praying, and I'm not trying to hold us up as being uh, you know, great people of faith or, or better in prayer than anyone else, but we didn't know what else to do, so we prayed about it. So um, we prayed a lot, um, not just one prayer, but we prayed a lot. In 2002, um, she was pregnant again. Well, this time we were elated, but we were also a little fearful, a little uh, concerned. We didn't know what was going to happen. And uh, about eight weeks along, same thing, that she had another miscarriage. Well, at that point, we were really uh, confused, fear, fearful, uh, we didn't know what to do. We went to the doctors in Birmingham, Huntsville. Um, if you want to bring some of those other pictures up there on the screen, I've got a couple of pictures we have I want to show. But uh, um, we were fearful. I was driving back and forth to Huntsville, and, and uh, honestly, I, I prayed a lot during that time. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to say that we're, you know, we had great faith. We were trying to have faith. Um, uh, Deborah's an amazing woman. And she did something, and I didn't know we had this uh, this until a few years ago. We found this letter that she had written, and, and she was okay for me to use this to talk about this, but she had actually written a letter. Uh, I don't know if you can read it, but uh, I may not be able to read it either. But she basically said, I'm turning this over to you, God. And uh, So... I think that's what we have to do sometimes we have to turn it over to him and she said um, I'm okay with whatever happens I think that was a turning point so we go from not knowing not believing we were going to have kids we were talking about adoption we we had started that not the process but we had talked about it um, I was 33 years old so we were thinking well we're going to adopt which is a great thing too um so we kept praying. Well, we were seeing a doctor in Birmingham, and he said, you know, don't get pregnant right now. I need to do some tests. We're going to look at some things. And Deborah didn't listen to him. Uh, she ended up getting pregnant. <laughs> so she actually got pregnant again. He said, that's okay. Um, we did, di didn't do anything major. She took some baby aspirin to keep her blood from clotting as quickly. He thought that may be the problem. So from there, uh, in 2004, Wesley was born, uh, nine pounds. <laughs> so that was, our, uh, that was our first blessing. We were, we were so thankful. You know, it, it wasn't easy because we had nine ultrasounds, eight or nine ultrasounds during that time because they were concerned with his, you know, with that pregnancy. Well, he ended up being a healthy, healthy boy. Um, and he's such a blessing to us. Um, in 2000. Um, six, Rachel was born, so another blessing, and we're so, I just adore Rachel. Um, we were thankful. We were like, uh, you know, thankful for what we thought we wasn't going to be able to have. We ended up having a blessing, a boy and a girl, healthy, uh, everything we had prayed about. So we were... <laughs> We were just thankful we got involved, you know, got our life going, uh, everything going on. And so then the way it works with us is we decided then that we were happy where we were at. Um, blessed with two kids, two wonderful kids. So Deborah went ahead and had a procedure, uh, had her tubes tied. Um, the official term for that, lap laparoscopic tubal, I think. Anyway, we've got pictures of that. I'm not going to show you that. <laughs> we we actually have pictures they gave us as part of the procedure. They give you a picture to prove that they, that they did the procedure. Uh, Dr. Gillum did the procedure. She's a wonderful doctor. She's actually retired now, by the way, uh, after she heard our news, I think. But <laughs> Anyway, she had that procedure done, and uh, it, was, it was almost five years uh, we, before Abigail came home. So... We had, uh, we had talked to Dr. Gillum, and she said, well, I can't tell you what happened. Um, 
She said, I've been doing this for many, many years, and I can count on my hand the number of people who got pregnant after this, and they were all within a few months. Well, we were five years. So it was tough at first, I'll be honest with you. Um, we wasn't prepared for that, but we, we kept going back to, well, we prayed for this. We asked for this. And that verse that I just read um, definitely comes into play, more than we could imagine. <laughs> and we've been blessed. Um, we're so thankful. Uh, we've every, a lot of people here have helped, uh, have encouraged us, had a few laughs. Uh, it was amazing when I tell when I told people we were having another baby how many laughs I got. People <laughs> laughing, but anyway, I guess what I want to say is you know maybe maybe someone can be encouraged by that um, that uh, you know when we pray about something, I don't think those prayers ever disappear. They, they go up there and they, uh, they stay with God. Uh, it may not be in our timing. It may not be the way that we want to do it. But uh, we had prayed about that. We had asked for that. And then, uh, it, you know, it, it was more than we could have imagined. Um, even after we had a procedure to not be able to have any more kids. Um, so that's all I had. I just wanted to thank everyone here for all the help uh, that you've given us. And... Uh, Maybe that'll be an encouragement to you. Thank you. round of applause to that.
right, at this time I'd like our elders to go ahead and come on forward. They have a special gift for each of our, uh, our new uh, babies and their parents. And so as they're coming up, uh, feel free to just stand up here, guys, and stick around. Um, <clears throat> and then I'll, I'll ask the parents to come. And listen, don't worry about tears and crying and squirming and everything else. You're surrounded by folks that love you, and it's going to be okay. So first of all, let me invite uh, Calvin Dalton to come on the stage. And if he would bring his parents, Calvin and Jamie, that would be great, too, uh, and come on down here. And after them, we're going to ask Reese Lynn to bring Hunter and Jennifer with, with, with them. Spencer and Caitlin Collis, would you bring... Well, I guess they're not here, but... Uh, uh, they have a new baby, Reese, and Ava Claire is going to come and grab something for her baby brother here um, uh, right now. And I think Rosemary is going to come with her. So come on down here, uh, Ava Claire. And as they're coming, let's have uh, Deborah and Dustin come with Abigail Faith and join us on the stage. Then Lee and Catherine Henderson, if you'd bring Ethan with you, that would be fantastic. <clears throat> and the rest of the family, too. It's all right. Uh, Ori and Allison, will you bring Declan with you? Not crying this time. I love it. My namesake, Stephen Smith, would you bring Max with you? Jake and Ashley Taylor, would you bring Ezra and the rest of the family too? Matt and Shana, come on, bring Elijah with you. And Jordan and Casey, will you bring Colin as well? My biggest fear when we do something like this is that we have somehow overlooked a child, and we certainly don't want to do that. And maybe you're just here today for the first time, and you have a new little one, and you just like a blessing over your child. I, I'm Listen, we're willing. Come on down and join this group of uh, parents here on the stage with these shepherds, and uh, we would love to be a part of that blessing as well. And so if that's you, feel free to make your way down here. Um, I, I am just so blessed uh, to, to, to be a part of this church, and I hope that you recognize the blessing that it is to be a part of Beltline to be led by these amazing shepherds and to, uh, to watch this church be transformed in front of our very eyes is, is an incredible, incredible thing. And so before we have that elder, uh, one of our elders come and pray, I want to ask the parents today, this is for you, all of you who are on stage with me right now, will you pledge to support and love your children by providing the opportunity for them to grow in the family of faith with the hope that they will someday confess Christ as their own teacher, Lord, and Savior, and obey the gospel. And if you are willing to do that, I'm going to ask you right now to say, we will. With a little more enthusiasm. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask you one more, parents. Will you, to the best of your ability and with God's help, provide a loving family environment in which they can grow in love and loyalty and obedience to God? And if you're willing to do that, can I get a rousing, we will? Oh, even better. Now, to the congregation. I'm going to ask you to stand if you don't mind. They're standing. I'm going to ask you to stand as well. And so, Beltline Church of Christ, I want to ask you today, will you pledge to support and love these wonderful families, to help them, to lend a hand when needed, and to do all that you can to help them come to a deeper faith and help them train up their family in faith? And if you're willing to do that, I need a really rousing we will from all of you out here today. Amen. All right, let's have a prayer over these wonderful children. And if you're here today and need prayers, we're going to have elders up here after the service for you to come and pray with them. And uh, after this prayer, we'll be dismissed. Let's pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful and overjoyed at this opportunity to be here with these families and their, their new ones. And Father, we see what a gift they are. We see the excitement and the joy on the faces of these parents. And Father, we just pledge to you that we will lift them up, that we'll, we will be encouragers. Father, that we will help direct these 
young parents in, in guiding their children in the way that they should go. And Father, help us all, strengthen us, that we can be one body united in your service, Father. We see the future in these young children. And Father, we know that we're in good hands because of parents that love them, because of congregations that love and support and are concerned about the upbringing of, of our children in this world today. Father, help us do all we can to serve you, to be a good example, and to lift each other up when we fall. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.